Western blotting requires that proteins are transferred out of the gel and onto a microporous membrane where they are more accessible to antibodies during immunodetection steps. The most common choices for membrane are nitrocellulose and polyvinylidene fluoride, also known as PVDF. At the microscopic level, both PVDF and nitrocellulose membranes look like a sponge. The pores of the membrane yield a high surface area, which allows for protein binding. Choosing between nitrocellulose or PVDF depends on the characteristics of your target as well as downstream applications. The first Western blots were performed using nitrocellulose membranes. While nitrocellulose is cheap and introduces minimal background, it does have some drawbacks including lower binding capacity and reduced physical strength. Since its introduction in the 1980s, PVDF has become more common among molecular biologists due to several benefits. Although it is more expensive, PVDF has roughly doubled the protein binding capacity as compared to nitrocellulose, so it can be helpful when detecting low abundance proteins. Keep in mind that PVDF must first be activated in methanol prior to use. PVDF is not brittle like nitrocellulose, so it can be easier to work with. PVDF membranes are also more resilient throughout processing and during multiple rounds of protein detection. If you must choose to use nitrocellulose, it might be helpful to use supported nitrocellulose, which is more sturdy than traditional nitrocellulose. Additionally, when performing near-infrared western blots, always use low fluorescence PVDF to ensure high sensitivity. Standard PVDF displays high levels of autofluorescence, which can mask low abundance signals. Low fluorescence PVDF is formulated to minimize inherent background and is therefore ideal for fluorescent western blotting. Whether using PVDF or nitrocellulose, you must also consider the pore size of the membrane. Both PVDF and nitrocellulose come in one of two pore size formulations. 0.45 microns or 0.22 microns. A membrane with the 0.45 micron pore size is suitable for most western blot targets, including proteins over 20 kilodaltons. For smaller proteins less than 20 kilodaltons and peptide analysis, a pore size of 0.22 microns is recommended. Keep in mind that each protein is unique. Different targets may require optimization, including the choice of membrane. I hope these lessons have taught you how to prepare your gel and membrane for Western blot transfer. In the next section, my colleague Carol will discuss a few best practices and things to keep in mind when preparing for transfer.